All right, what we're gonna be looking at in this segment of our mathematical journey is number nine from the January 2020 um, paper two. And this um, segment is um, geometry and trigonometry. From the geometry section, it's gonna be a circle theory. And from the trigonometry section, it's gonna be a bearings question. So two things we're looking at, we're looking at a circle theory question and we will be looking at the bearings question. So stay tuned, I will be right back. But guess what, before I go, remember um, to like, subscribe and drop a comment. Thank you. So it says the circle below, I'm reading right here, the circle below has the center O, so let me move the circle up so you could see. So the circle below has the center O right there. And the points A, B, C, and D line on its circumference. A straight line passes through the points A and B. Angle C, B, D is 49 degrees. And angle O, A, B is 37 degrees. So all that information that we got is already on the diagram. They left off nothing. So let's proceed to the questions. The first question says, write down the mathematical name. So write down the mathematical names of the straight lines BC and OA. Here is BC. All right. So BC, it is simply um, a chord. All right, so BC here is a chord. All right, so a chord comes from one point on the circumference to another point on the circumference. So that's a chord right there. All right, so BC is a chord and OA is a radius. OA is a radius. All right, so for that, we have a chord and a radius. So BC is a chord and OA is a radius, all right? So there it is, so we, call it, we would have collected those marks for that, chord and a radius, all right? Let's, let's go further. Next question says, determine the value of each, determine the value of each of the following angles. Show detail working where necessary and give a reason to support your answer. So we're talking about X, let's look at X. All right, when we observe this X, right? Observing this X, no. X is here. X is this angle right here, right? But we're, we're seeing where where this angle here is in a triangle that is an isosceles triangle. So if you look, OB is the same thing as OA. They're both together radius for the circle. So then they would have the same length. So then if 37 is at A, then we have 37 at B as well. So then I can find the value of X easily by using the total angle in a triangle. And then I need to subtract 37 plus 37. So basically the isosceles triangle would have given me the clue for the, the other angle. And then I could put it together to find 106 as the angle here in the center here. This is 106 degrees. Again, because triangle OAB is an isosceles, these base angles here right now are equal. So we add these, take them from 180, as you could see here. And then we would have gotten the third angle in the triangle to be 106. All right, let's look at the other um, question. So we have 106 for X. So 
So I would work out X to be 106, right? So X was um, 106. And the, the, the degree, the reason we have that is firstly, it was, I'll say the isosceles triangle. That really gave me all of that knowledge, you know, the isosceles triangle. And then I actually used the total interior angle of a triangle to top it off, all right? So those are reasons that we use to, to go forward, the isosceles and the total internal angle. All right, let's look at angle Y. Next question says, find the value of angle Y. Now, when I look at angle Y here, um, I'm seeing where this is 90 degrees. And how did I get that to be 90 degrees? Is because B, so let me show you B, O, D is actually a diameter. So if we have a straight line passing from one point through the center to another point on the circumference, then all of that line is automatically a diameter. So this is a diameter here. That is a diameter. So then if we have a diameter and we have an angle subtended from the end points of the diameter and it goes towards the circumference, then that is gonna be a 90 degree angle right in this little corner right here. So this is a 90 degrees. So because we understand that this is a 90 degree, no, I could say angle at Y is simply 180 degrees subtract the 90 plus the 40, nine and we're gonna get 41 so so we could see here the total internal angle of the triangle is 180 degrees so when we when we add the 90 and the 49 that's 139 and we subtract that from 180 we get 41 uh, my reason for the why there what would be my reason it is because I've seen the two things. I saw the angle in the semicircle. So that was what really brought home the idea to me. So angle Y is equal to 41 degrees. And we, the reason here would be one, we could say the angle in a semicircle. So we saw that angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So that gave me the extra push to say, all right, that's one. And the second thing that we use again was the total interior angles of a triangle. We use that. So we use that 180 degrees there to help us to do the final, final calculation. And the next question now is a bearings question. So it says, the diagram below, so we are right here. It says the diagram below, not drawn to scale, All right? So the diagram below, not drawn to scale, shows the route of a ship cruising from Pal Palm City, P, to Town Q, and then to Rivertown, R. The Bearing of Q from P is 133 degrees. It's on the diagram. And the angle PQR is 56 degrees. That's also on the diagram. So then we have a nice label diagram already and everything is on it. The question says calculate the value of W. So we're asked to calculate the value of W right here, this angle right here in this corner right there. We want to find that angle right there. So, all right, no problem. Let's find that W angle. What we're looking at though, is that a straight angle measures 180 degrees. So um, I want to accept the fact that this straight angle here would have produced 180 degrees. So that's one thing that is going to help me when I'm ready. Also, 
also there are a number of things that we could do i'm going to jump to core interior core interior says that if i have say two parallel line like my two north lines just now right which is this let me change the color which is um if i have my two north lines like this is one and this is one here um cut by a transversal right that is pq so that's like a p and a q here these two angles are supplementary. So they add to make 180 degrees. So um, that's one way I could get that angle here to be 47, because I would have to say 180 minus 133, co-interior will help me to know that this angle is, 30, this is 47. And then I could use it. Another way I could have gotten 47 there was if I amend this piece here. Because if I continue the 133 all the way around, it would have needed 47 to make this 180 here. So again, I would use my Z angle to show now that this angle here is the same thing as this angle here, 47. So whichever way we take it, the angle up here is 47. So then in, in a final take, W would be this. Having known, that we have that part to be 47. W is gonna be 180 degrees minus the sum of 56 plus 47. So we wanna do that. So 56 plus 47, that's about 103. So 180 minus 103, and we're looking at 77 degrees, right? So angle W is 77 degrees right there, right there. So that's the value of angle W. 77 degrees. The next question says that determining the bearing of P from Q. So we think about this carefully, the bearing of P, but from Q. So the bearing of P from Q, let me mark that angle. Determine the bearing of P from Q. If I'm supposed to mark the bearing of P from Q, then I am coming from Q and the north of Q all the way to P. So I'm gonna be marking this angle here, all of that to that. So I want all of that angle. And I could do that two ways. One way is to look at it and say, if I had continued around here, it would have given me a full circle. If I had continued, if I had continued, it would have given me a full circle. That means the 47, is the only thing that I don't need because the bearing of P from Q is everything except the 47. So I could start off by saying, listen, the bearing of P from Q right now could be 360. Take away that 47 degrees because it's the only thing that would have stopped the full circle and it would have given me 330 degrees. That's the bearing of P from Q, right? Because as I said to you, that 47 degrees right there, this is the only thing that prevented the full circle. So I just take it off and I'm there. An alternative method right now is to be adding up everything as you go along. For example, um, for example, let's look at this. For example, if we are looking at this here, from here, from here to here, that's 180 degrees. Then we're adding from there to there, that is 77. And then lastly, from here to here, that is 56. So if we put together those three pieces, we would have got the same answer. So let us look at the alternate answer. Or you could have said 180, which is all of that from north to south. So this is 180 degrees plus the 77 degrees plus the 56 degrees. And we put all of that together, definitely we will get the same. So this lends itself to 313 degrees 
just the same. So in an exam, whichever method you choose, it's fine. Just see what you have to see and you move on. All right. No, so we just found that. So the last thing that we want to find now is calculate the distance RP, all right? So RP. So let's just take a quick look at RP. We wanna calculate RP, all right? So you wanna, we wanna calculate RP. So let's push this to the side. So we wanna find RP, which is this distance here. We want to find that distance and that is RP, all right? That is RP, RP, all right. You notice that we are seeing everything in this corner. We know everything in this corner right here, everything in this corner, everything. So we have the, an angle between two known sides down at that corner right there, which means that we're gonna employ the cosine rule right now. The cosine rule says that R P square is equal to 210 square plus 290 square minus two times 210 times 290 times the cosine of 56 degrees. So let's take our calculator out 210 square would give us 44,100. 290 square would give us 84,100. And then we wanna put all of these one time on the calculator. So negative two times 210 times 290 times the cosine of 56 degrees. And we will get overall, we subtract in 68,000. 109.7. So now let's let's put it together. 44,100, we're adding 84,100. And then we're taking 68,109.7. We're left with 60,090. Point three. But at the end of the day, this is RP square. So taking the square root of both sides, RP is equal to 245.13 kilometers. All right, so RP is 245.13 kilometers.